Uh, great news is, new camera, riding along. Maybe all the camera angles close up. I've got a uh, some new crash bungs, which I thought were bigger on the pit. You know, they were a little bit bigger on the picture. Compared to them, they're a lot neater anyway. So hopefully, I can fit them. If not, it's no no loss really. <coughs> not that bad. I just need to find me. Uh, <coughs> I think these ones actually they go on the where the fairing bolts on. Let me just check. The pen. Yeah, they do. So they go on where the fairing fits, where the fairing bolt goes on. <coughs> but anyway, nevertheless, it looks fantastic. That's another great thing. Uh, so, the engine pen. Oh, it does fit. Oh, no, it doesn't. So it does go through there. That doesn't. So that the engine pin will go through. So that that's a good good sign. It means I don't really have to repair the stupid hole in the bearing here. That's where they should. I think I believe they do go in there, which is a load neater. And they've got stupid fairing all, which could cover up, uh, repair and cover up with a stick. <laughs> you know, if I'm repairing, uh, if I'm on about doing the fairings, the different colour and the tank, wrapping it probably, then I can just fill that in and plastic weld whatever I need to do with it. I'll put them there in the normal hole, I believe. Which is only on a little. I see why they put it there because it's on the strongest point of the frame as, a, as far as the mounting position goes. But there it's only on a little tab. So if you drop it, you break the tab on the frame. So that's scrapped and empty. So I can see why they've done that. But I don't like that. I'll probably have to get a longer bolt. Because that, that's bent anyway, anyhow, eh? and it doesn't go back in. I believe it could. I've taken it out and the engine's dropped a little bit. So if I jack it up, that'll probably go back in. I'll try. I'll do my best with that. <coughs> this camera, though, is a Crosstool CT9, CT9000 Action Cam. Uh, don't know how good it is, I've seen good reviews on it, so I had it for my birthday, it was yesterday, Friday the 13th, if you want to wish me happy birthday, thank you. Um, bad news now. So, come with more. Looks fantastic. If I keep you, if I do like the All this, the original colour scheme with the new black frame. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but there you go. Then uh, I'll probably leave it and just put a sticker, uh, try and repair that, or find a thicker bung, another one of them maybe, and some new bolts. Because that one. That's been cut down and all sorts, that has, so it doesn't really fit. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Probably some new spaces as well. I've got two of them, but they're all on one side. Uh, this is my indicator thing and number plate holder, which I'd like to change, but nevertheless, it's all right for now. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, the bad news is tank's coming back off, airbox carved off because I'm going to do the valve clearances and I've got a special tool for it voila let's call the feeler gauge now this feeler gauge 
they're all they got all different uh, thicknesses for example 203 mil 229 mil and it goes down stages point sorry point 279 point 305 etc etc and if you've got a Haynes manual I'll show you on there but if, if not it'll show you what sizes what gaps what tolerances they are on the valve <coughs> and uh, what you can change them with dust off and here I can't remember the page the, 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 the valve clearance is checking just went Right at the front somewhere. In the front of this manual, <coughs> it will have all this, the tolerances for the. Oh, I thought it was. Bold boxes is, is an example. Say so your tolerant, uh, your measurement is between 0.45 and 0.049, and you've got a uh, you've got a thickness in mil, 2.95 mil shim in it. You need to change it with a 3.15. That, that's just an example. <clears throat> and then uh, somewhere else, obviously you choose your bike. There's quite a few there. Somewhere else in here, it will show you, tell you. And obviously, same again for this. This is for the ZX7R. These are so just an example. Uh, One's for inlet and one's for inlet and one's for exhaust valves. <coughs> Tells you how to set it all up and all that stuff. So I'm going to do it like that. Even though I'm a mechanic, you still have to read sometimes. <laughs> uh, it should tell you what sh uh, what the tolerances should be. And I believe that's at the front in the specs. And that is. Here we go. Surface specifications. <coughs> now you can. This is a for all you ZX Ninja boys, the old the school ninjas. And you, uh, valve clearance is just there. ZX seven R, ZX nine R B, ZX nine R C E and F. The intake should be between 0.15 and 0.24 millimeter. So. You select your uh, thickness on there and go through until it's too tight to go in. And same with the exhaust, you do the same, so it should be 0.22 or between 0.22 and 0.31 mil. Uh, 0 0.21, 0.22 and 0.31 mil, yeah, for the ZX9 or CE and F. Others will be in there. I'll also do a compression compression test with my new tester. Got to connect the battery for that and take the spark plugs out. So I'm going to start cracking on with that. Right then, so battery's connected now. Got everything off. I've even taken the the front cover off. 
the top cover rather that holds the loom in place and stops crap going up. Um, I have kept the evoc system block off off, uh, carbs are off, this that and the other. I've taken out, I've pulled out all the cables back so that's why I've taken the front fairing off. You don't have to do all this but I am. Now what I'm doing is going to check these spark plugs. There are, there's the first one in yeah, cylinder one. See that's pretty decent sparky that. I know I've only had it here for like 50 mile but that's good. And, uh, what I'll do now is hope to get PSI reading of ZX9RCE and F models is 155 to 236 PSI or 10.9 to 16.5 bar. Obviously, nice and sparky. I'm going to match the the inlet for the compression tester to the spark plug. That's the correct one. And then uh, what we do. Why is that on us? Try to do dare go without losing your bits. Obviously not letting any pressure in or out. Or out obviously. And the uh, waz are on. And let's see what we get. Ignition on. Hands out the way. Kill switch on. So we're looking for what was it? 155 to 236 PSI. You do it obviously until it stops, so just over 175. So, what's that one? About 177.5. Or 12.5 bar. Which is bang on. Bang on where you'd expect it to be, really. So, I'll take all that off and do the rest. It's a German one this is as well. I don't know, Jinhao City. It's not German, it's Chinese. It's, this was cheap, this was like, what, 20 quid, if that? Absolutely bargain. 15 quid I think it was, something like that, on eBay. Just got a cheap one. But for what, how, much, how long you use it for? Sound into it and, you know, you got good pressure on. Anyway, let's crack on. What I'm going to do now is just, Disconnect the battery off. Don't need that on anymore. Uh, so we know I've got decent compression. So in theory, really the well, 
if you had bad compression here or another another way to that'll be another sign of bad uh, valve clearances not necessarily but it it could be one of the causes one of the causes of it uh, especially if they're too too big of course too little of a clearance so obviously it's holding the valves open a tiny bit so anyway now what I need to do is take off the old rocker cover cam cover all I need to do in there you know 610mm Six to ten mil uh, pins going down. I don't think these are very very tight in here either. I think they're in here something like twelve newton meters. But these have rubber bungs, rubber grommets up, uh, around them to stop oil spilling up. So if they're perished, you need to change them really because you don't want to have going everywhere. All this on here is just ACF fifty. From when I did it. Uh, yeah. Oh, that is it. You just can't get me ratchet into that one. So I'm just doing a quick ratchet spanning. So I'll have this off. And then the next job is the, the ignition timing cover. I'll show you what you need to look for there. I could set it to DDC. Oh, it's horrible weather. Right, now we're in close and personal. We can finally see what's happening down here. Oh, I haven't put that sparky back in. Let's put that back in. We don't want anything going into there, into the cylinders. As you can see, oil is getting to the top, so that's one of the things I don't need to worry about. Looks like someone's been in here before, so I'm happy with that. It says Z9, L967. I don't know what it says. I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. Do a crunch. Um, what do we have then? I've got so I've got the rocker cover off, cam cover if you want. Uh, what I'm going to be checking now is just around all the loads, see if we're anywhere. It doesn't look like much uh, anywhere at all. They're all nice and way how you expect them to be. So I'm happy with that. So look, this is one, two, three, four cylinders in that order. Uh, you just go left to right. Exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust at the front. So that's pretty easy to figure that out. Oh yeah, this has been a this has had a egg gasket by the looks of it. Because if you look in there, you can see. I don't know if you can that bolt that pin there let's get you in it's got pink marks on they all got marks on so someone's obviously had them off and tried to talk talk them up now this is these should have had a shims check before that's a good sign but you always should check them always check them when you can i can't remember the the schedules, how many miles and years and whatnot. I think it's 300. No, no it can't be, can it? I think it's every 4,000 miles you check, check them. Could be 8,000. One of them anyway, but you should, because it's a Kawasaki engine, not as good as Honda's, shim wise. Uh, yeah, uh, buckets and shims, not as good as Honda's really, so you want to you want to check them a bit more. I suppose you could get Honda 
buckets and shims, but I don't know which ones. So I'm not going to bother, I'm going to stick to what I know. And all that, I bought all these valve shims for this engine. Tong Tong Trade. They weren't cheap either, they weren't. Yeah, nothing, no way, horrible bits in there. Obviously, I've just serviced it, so I haven't done so. The oil's quite clean anyway. I'm just looking for any debris. Check the chain. No, I'm tight. Then a metal on that chain. I don't know where that's come from. I can't find it anymore, but yeah, I think that's off this anyway. Yeah, I don't know where that's come from. There's no way, no other debris in there. Can't see anything. So that's good. Right. Right then, so the ignition covers off if you want to change uh, the uh, ignition timing thing, uh, what's it called, that, to uh, a better one, you just take that pin out, it's a 17mm pin, and it shouldn't really upset anything, you've got to be careful, I'm not changing it, not yet anyway, um, so, in order to get this top dead centre, there's a mark here. Which mark is it now? Let me just get. There's an F line, and then a line and a T. So this line here for the T, just before the T, needs to line up with the crankcase join. So there. And then for this one, it's the one on the T there. All the pins for this are 10mm, but this is the top two. We've got a bracket on for the top cable. I'm not, if I leave them in, they stay in. So you've got to obviously clockwise, and you're all the way around. To the T marks. So that there, one, four, that's cylinder number, one and four and cylinder number two and three. So one and four on the T mark, the line before the T is lined up now with the the join of the crankcase. So that's how you know that it's TDC. So that's a TDC mark and that's the timing mark, that one there. That's what it says anyway. Um, in order to check the valves, what you do, what you should have now, up, up at the top, I'll get my torch. I'll just double check. There should be marks on these. You come here. Someone's actually obviously done this before because there's a mark there. Can you see the white mark? Well, I mean, you got better. There, you are. a white mark there. On there, it's the same again. A T mark, which is timing mark, and that should be in line with the top of the the head without the gasket on. And same again there. See the white mark? I mean, yeah. And that should be in line with the top without the gasket on. And I'll just check that now. That's says PX. So we come up here again. There you can see it says EX, not T. So EX, there, that's a oh, stupid cable. <laughs> 
come on, EX and the line, and see how that's lined up with the top of the head valve valve carry. So that's that. Put that back on before I forget. So that's something good. So now up here, we're going to check the clearances. All right, so checking the valves. One, two, three, four. These bolts are in the middle of each valve, they're each couple of valves. So this is the intake exhaust, obviously. So what I'm after now is 0.15 for the intakes. You get to 0.15 on your measuring device. So it's like TDC. No, not quite. What's that from here? There's a timing out on there. Number four is at top dead centre, so that's why I'm checking this one. Number four is at top dead centre, so that one's 0 0.15, that one isn't. So to get 0 point, because I haven't got a 0 0.14, I'm going to have to get the 10 and the 4. That's 4. That's a bit of There's the 10. So, 4 and 10 together should read 1.0.14 Nope no then so that isn't 0.14 so what I'll get is now the nine and the four to make 0.13 Nine and the four. That going through. Best to see if they go through, really. Sorry. Grabbing. Where are they all gone now? Here we go. I need the four. And eight. There's the eight. And 
There's the four and that'll make twelve. Go back to 0 0.12 again just to be sure. Probably fit in now. Oh, it does. It grabs too much, that does. So you write down on your little list 0.15. Yeah. So that's that one. And the other intake you can check is number two. You know, point one five again. Number two. Tight. 